Awesome. Okay, so like I said, you're going to have the opportunity to put a face with one of these. And I'm going to ask you today, if you're not involved in one of our small groups and one of our connections, you're not involved in being discipled, um, I really encourage you, find a group, find one of these groups. As I'm saying, circle some of the groups that you think that may, may interest you and you want more information about. And then as soon as church is over today, you're welcome to find one of these people that, have, that are going to come up here. We're going to pray for them. We're going to bless them. We're going to thank them for their service. And, and I really encourage you to connect with one of them. Just go up to them, introduce yourself after church. You have the opportunity uh, to just tell them who you are. You can write down names, phone number, whatever you want. Their phone numbers are on here. And if you have any further information, if you have any further questions, all the information in this pamphlet uh, will be here every Sunday at our information booth. It will also be on our website, okay? It'll be on our small group page of our website, and we'll also have some information on Facebook throughout the week so that you can get involved, okay? So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you. We want to communicate well uh, with you what God is doing here at Abundant Life, how you can be involved. And so we're going to go through this today. We're going to take just a little bit of time, and uh, it's going to be good. Everyone say, it's going to be good. Now say, it's going to be me. It's going to be me. Sorry. <laughs> My mind is just awful. It's not bad. I mean, it was good. So, we're going to go through this, put a name with a face, circle the ones you think that you might be interested in, take note of that face so you can connect with them after church, okay? So, first one, Father's Table. I'm going to ask Anne to come up very quickly. She can, she can come over here. Uh, Ann's group is doing a, a new, and by the way, Ann did bring M&Ms and peanuts for everyone, so go grab some M&M and peanuts. Ann is awesome. Uh, Father's Table. It's a Sunday morning Bible study uh, at 9 a.m. It says 10 a.m. on there, but it's actually 9 a.m. Um, they are about to start a new series called Esther by Beth Moore. Okay, so they have all the information, they have books, everything you need. Uh, that's on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. I know some of you, you're used to going to a, a Bible study on Sunday morning. Well, now we're going to have two different Bible studies on Sunday morning. We're excited about that. Uh, we, we don't have the space for any more Bible studies at this point. We barely have the space for two. Uh, so we need a new building, so we'll be praying about that. Um, so Anne is in charge of that. You can see her beautiful face. Uh, uh, also, okay, the next one, women's group. Uh, Fear of the Lord with Sherry Vodinoff. Sherry, do you want to come up very quickly? Oh, she's in the front row over here. She painted this morning. Uh, they're doing a Fear of the Lord. She has a women's group on Monday nights. She leads. She's been doing it for quite a while, 7 p.m. Uh, that's on 1407 North Elm Street, which is on the east side of town, okay? So uh, if you would like more information about um, the Fear of the Lord, talk to Sherry because she knows all about it. No, it's awesome. Yeah, be a part of that woman's Bible study. That's an in-home Bible study, which is awesome uh, on Monday nights. All right, men's account accountability group uh, with Jason Keller. And actually, uh, Dace switched over to a different, uh, a different Bible study. So Matt Johnson is uh, going to be with Jason. So I'm going to ask Jason and Matt to come on up here. Uh, you can put a, yeah, I am afraid to come to this, but you, like, you will be accountable or we will kick you in the throat type of thing. Man, you guys look scary. Well, you're not. I mean, I know you. I don't know why you look so scary today. Oh. They're, they're going to be walking through a, a series called Father Fiction, uh, but we'll also be an accountability group where they're just going to get together and talk about life issues and what's going on. Uh, because I know them, I know that they're going to have a lot of fun. They'll probably be in here playing games and stuff at some point, basketball or something, but it's going to be mainly about uh, Father Fiction going through this Bible study. So that's Tuesday night, 7 p.m., right here in the sanctuary. You can come in through those doors. If you want more information, also, Jason's uh, cell phone is right there. So you can... oh. I didn't mean now. <laughs> he, picked a, he picked a good seat today. He's going to be eating M&Ms all the time. I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, for the Wood River area, Mike and Pinky Dubs and Carl and Shirley uh, are, have been leading a group for a number of years. And uh, I'll have uh, Mike and Pinky and, yeah, you guys come up. And Carl, you can come up as well. I know Shirley's out today. Uh, but uh, their, their Bible study's out in Wood River area. So if you just like to drive out into the country or you're from that direction, uh, we would love to have you come be a part. We'll change our address. Okay, and we're going to change the address. Yeah, 
we're hosting it at our home, and it's 3646 South 130 Road. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Find Carl because you won't find it, okay? <laughs> uh, Awesome. So if you would like more information, talk to Mike and Pinky, Carl Hughes. Uh, that is, that is uh, out in the Wood River area, just, just uh, north of Wood River. Um, but I know you'll be blessed because Shirley will probably make brownies every week. I may start going to that one. So uh, if you could just, you can just find, find Carl as soon as service is over or Mike and Pinky, and they'll give you, uh, they'll give you that address, okay? So, all right. Uh, basic training Bible study. This is our other Sunday morning Bible study that's starting. Um, it's, uh, it's an awesome opportunity. It's actually going to be in our office building. We have a table in there. We have another room with some couches and stuff. And so uh, if you're interested in, in uh, a Bible study that's just Christianity 101, basic training, uh, our friend Michael Wilcox is, is going to be leading that one. Um, so yeah, give him a hand. He needs some love today, people. They'll be going through this book called The Purple Book. Uh, the beautiful thing about, about the Bible study that Michael's leading is you can jump in at any time. We want you to be committed to it, but you don't have to start from the beginning. You can start at any time. They go through different topics um, of Christianity, just really basic belief systems. That's here on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. So uh, I know some of you, you're up every Sunday morning. You're just watching the clock, just waiting, saying, I can't wait to be at church. You don't have to wait. You just come. And you'll be blessed, and you'll be a part, and uh, I know that Michael's going to do an amazing job with, uh, with that Purple Book training. So uh, I encourage you, if you want more information, you can call Michael, um, or once again, Facebook, website, it'll be all on there, okay? This is my favorite Bible study. Uh, I've never been to it, but it's called Sweaty Friendship. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's called Worthy Workouts. Where's Heidi at? Is Heidi here? Oh, Heidi, come on up here. Uh, you can, you can start this side over here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Heidi. Uh, Heidi and Jenny, Champion and Peaches, uh, they do a, a workout classes, free workout classes uh, for guys and girls. Anybody you want to come, be a part of those. Um, and also just have fun fellowshipping with other Christian people who um, really want to get in shape. And so uh, you can come be a part of that. I know Mitch, that's his favorite time of the week, is doing the drummer stick dances. Uh, so come, be a part. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. They have two, group, two groups a week. Um, and as you saw in your bulletin today, some of those times uh, actually changed this week. But if you'd like to get more information, you can, you can call Lori or you can connect with, with Heidi uh, today at service, okay? All right, uh, the next two groups, I'm going to bring up Corey uh, Schneckloth. Oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> Corey's coming up. Uh, Corey does two groups throughout the week. <laughs> uh, Cor- Corey's our youth pastor. Uh, he does two groups. He does a young adult. Um, it's a fun friendship Bible study. They do three nights of the, of the month, our, our Bible study, worship, um, things like that. And then one, one Friday night of the month, uh, it is um, purely fun-ish. No, they have a good time. If you know Corey, you know they have a good time. But that's Friday night, 7 p.m. Um, n- um, 90% of the time, it's over right over here in the Legacy Room. Um, so you can come be a part of that. Some people ask, hey, how young do you have to be to be a young adult? You don't have to be young at all, okay? No one is too old to come to that. You're too old to come to that. There's no one too old to come to that. Tim Ziegler, you can come. Congratulations. Claire? Young adults, come on, girl. Steve? No. <laughs> you stay home. <laughs> no, but the, the other beautiful thing about his, his group is they have snacks, and it's good. And it's usually nothing healthy. So what you want to do is you want to come early to Worthy Workouts, and then go to Corey's group, and you'll be fine. Uh, we have some youth cell groups that are just starting up. Uh, we don't have all the information about, on those yet, but if you're interested in helping lead those or you are a youth, a young person, you're in high school, uh, please 
Um, come on Wednesday nights and then get connected with the, the small groups that Corey's going to be um, starting to lead uh, with Junior and Dace. So that'll be good. All right. One Sunday a month, we have a special group. Uh, it's a prophecy training group. It's called the Prophecy Gathering. Uh, Bill, uh, or Bill, Bob Harris is in charge of that. <laughs> Billy Bob Harris is in. <laughs> uh, what this is, is that uh, we believe, we believe in the spirit of prophecy that God does nothing without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets. We believe that God gives words to people today uh, is, over our church, over people individually. And if you would like to um, be around people who are, or, are, are working and trying to hone those skills, and also um, they keep the words for this church. God has given this church a number of words over the years, from way back in Pastor Gene's day to, uh, to Pastor Stephen Mel. And even today, God is releasing and, and giving us heart and a vision. And, and that group really talks about a lot of those words and, and, and says, okay, what is God saying for today? And so if you'd like to learn more about what that looks like, or you are one of those people who, you know, you're a hearer, you're a seer, you love that kind of thing, uh, go be a part of, of Bob's group. Um, that's, that's one Sunday every month, the first Sunday of every month. Uh, at 7 p.m. over in the office complex in the Blue Room, okay? So we'd love for you to come be a part of that. All right, uh, Thursday night, 7 p.m., Michelle Hahn at uh, 2609 Del Monte Avenue. Uh, she's starting a, a, a new Bible study, brand new. Michelle's never led a Bible study before, so you know it's going to be good. Uh, she's starting a Bible study called Bad Girls of the Bible. I don't know. She didn't write the material. She's just doing the book with you. <laughs> uh, but it's an, it, Michelle's awesome, if you know Michelle. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Um, so I encourage you ladies to go be a part of, of that group. If, if Michelle's group uh, interests you or you're like, I don't know what that means, Bad Girls of the Bible, she'll answer your question today. So uh, go ask her. She'll be at the bookstore today after service uh, working back there. So that'll be awesome. Um, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. in our office complex, we're starting a new group. Once again, we have, we're out of space if you come here on a Wednesday night, there's not a room that is empty. Every single room, from preschool rooms to kids' rooms to office complex to other side of the office. Laura, you got to go over here. So Laura and Hope are starting a group on Wednesday nights um, for ladies. Uh, I, the, another good part of about Wednesday nights is you can drop your kids off, be a part of this, and uh, come and get your kids right after. Um, but it's called Lioness. Lion, lioness. Lioness Arising, and it's by Lisa Bevere, and so uh, they're starting that on Wednesday nights um, right here in our office complex, and so if you want more information about that, you can talk to them, or you can just start showing up. Once again, all of this information is going to be on our Facebook page, website, and uh, Laura, um, I found out this week, knows everything about everything, and so she can answer all of your questions. Just call the office, and uh, she is incredible. Will you please just clap for Laura one time? She's awesome. Uh-huh. All right. Hey, uh, another new Bible study that's starting on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. for ladies, uh, Route 66. This is going to be led by Katie Mendick and Michaela Jones. So come on up. Give these girls a hand. I'll wait. <laughs> You're so awesome, Michaela. Hey, these girls are starting a group. This, this is a Route 66. This is just a walk uh, through the Bible. I know a lot of you have done like one-year Bible. Some of you, some of you, ladies, you, just, you just don't know where to start in the Bible. Um, you don't know you know, how to read the Bible. This is an awesome opportunity. They're going through a series called Route 66, which is just a pathway through, through Scripture, how to, how to read Scripture, um, different assignments throughout the week that will challenge you. And so if you would like just more information about Bible, um, you want to connect with, with Katie or Rachel, uh, or <laughs> Katie or Michaela, see, you, you walk slow and I forget things. It's your fault. <laughs> connect with them. Uh, today, give, give them your information, uh, talk to them about it. It'll be awesome. All right, uh, last one on our list for today, uh, Sandy Rodeman is, uh, and Kevin Rodeman. You guys can just stand here. Yeah, just stay up here in the middle. 
You're last. Uh, they're doing a series. It's a video-driven series called Loving Your Kids on Purpose. How many of you think that sounds like a good idea? How many of you find that hard sometimes? <laughs> I need to intentionally love my children. Uh, but it, it's really good. It's actually a, an amazing series. Sandy's is, Sandy has taught it a number of times. Some, of, some other, others of you have taught it, uh, been through it. Uh, maybe you need to go through it again uh, just for a refresher course. This is great for parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, neighbors of children, uh, anyone who has any type of contact or sees a child at any point of their life um, needs this. It is absolutely amazing giving you a different perspective on how to love your kids, um, not the way that you are loved and not the way that you love, but the way that they receive love really well and uh, the way that they they can grow and mature and uh, be quality, healthy human beings. So if you would like more information about that, talk to Sandy. Um, one of the things, they live out of town, and so they're doing their group on Sunday afternoons. They're gonna, everybody's going to go and grab their lunch, come back, and then they're going to do uh, their group together here in the office complex. So uh, it makes for an awesome opportunity for you just to come, uh, be a part, especially if you're from out of town and you, just, you really want to be a part of a group. Be a part of this group. It's absolutely amazing and wonderful, and these guys are going to do an amazing job leading it. Okay? All right. I encourage you to read through the rest of that pamphlet, Why We Do Small Groups. Uh, on the back of that sheet is opportunities for you to connect with us. I am so excited about this season. I'm so excited that from now until Christmas, that these guys have committed their lives to pouring into other people. And I encourage you to, to get connected, to, to get involved in one of these groups. Um, if, there's some, if there's something here and you're, you're saying, well, what about this? There's a void here. And God's saying, hey, I feel like you're calling me to lead a group. Um, I want to encourage you for our next session to really be praying about opening your home or coming here to this facility and leading uh, some other individuals in knowing God in a new, a deeper level, okay? So this is what we want to do. We want to pray for these guys, and I want to give you one last opportunity just to look at them, see their face, say, hey, I want to connect there, I want to connect there. And as soon as service is over here in just a few minutes, uh, I want to, I will give you that opportunity, okay? So, Father God, I thank you so much for each and every one of these individuals. I thank you for the leadership that you've placed in their lives and in their heart. God, I thank you, Father, that they've said yes to the call that you've placed upon them. God, I ask that you would give them uh, connections today. Father, that people would, would, their hearts would be connected so that they could grow and love you, so that they could grow in maturity and knowledge and revelation uh, of your love and your goodness. Father, I pray that every single one of their studies, Father, that the Holy Spirit would just be released upon those studies, God, that it wouldn't just be uh, learning of knowledge, but it would be a knowing of you through the understanding of Scripture and through the understanding of your Word. Father, we love you so much. I thank you for every single one of these individuals. I pray for strength for them and their family as they serve you well. In your son's precious and holy name, I pray. Amen. 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 Give these guys a big round of applause one more time. When we planned today's service, we really felt like, you know, that God was saying some specific things, especially when it came to rededicating your life of salvation. And, and so Corey and I talked earlier, and, you know, Corey, Corey is an evangelist through and through. He loves seeing people come to the Lord. So I said, Corey, why don't you just do that? He said, well, how long do you want me to go? I said, you just do what you want to do, because my sermon today can either be five minutes or it can be an hour and 45 minutes. So I'm going to go with the hour and 45 minute one. I wish you could see the mixed reaction of what I just said. <laughs> like some of the new people are like, honey, let's go. Don't cheer for me when I say things like that. You'll only encourage me. <laughs> no. So today I just want to share two scriptures with you and challenge you. I hope that every time you come here, you're challenged to do something different, to be different, to go into all the world, to make disciples, to change the people around you, to love people well. I hope you're challenged. If you would open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 22 for just a moment. 
Well, actually, I'll start in verse 34. And we all know this scripture, but I just want... You know, sometimes it's good to be reminded of who we are. It's so easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life. So easy to get caught up in the drama that you're in right now. That you forget the bigger picture of who you are. And what you're called to. Today, I'm going to give you a very short reminder. Matthew 22, starting in verse 34, it says, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Father God, I pray that today you would allow us to experience and know the simplicity of the kingdom of God. Father, that we would be challenged by your word. Father, we would be challenged by your goodness and your love. Father, that we would be humbled by your grace once again. In your son's name I pray. Amen. The simplicity of the gospel. I like to see the kingdom of God and the gospel as something like... I'm a visual person, so... How many of you have seen The Lion King? Okay, wait a second. Who hasn't seen The Lion King? Well, you little girl, you need to see The Lion King, okay? <laughs> Go to class. <laughs> There's a song in The Lion King. It's the circle of life. Hi, Winya. Konnichiwa. This is this thing in the East teaching that Simba's learning the circle of life and how everything, everything is this circle and it, it revolves. And, in, and, and, you, and you have your place in this circle. And I, sometimes I picture the kingdom of God and, and oftentimes we see it as this huge, complex you know, we think of this galaxy, and then there's this portion, and there's this portion, and, this, and, the, and, and there's all these different points on the horizon, and there's all these different things, and we can get caught up because I'm a prophet, and so I have to focus on the prophecy portion of this, or I'm an evangelist, and I have to focus on the evan- Listen, I really believe that the kingdom of God is very simple. I believe within, within the simplicity of the gospel, there's so many different intricate parts, but the kingdom in and of itself is simple. The gospel of Christ, the the, the Bible, is so complex. There's all of these different foundational truths and revelations, and you can make theologies, and and you 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 can do biblical studies, and all of this, and all of those things are good, but it all fits within a very simple plan. And it's so easy to get caught up in the complexities. Why do you think there's... 470,000 denominations across the world because someone got caught up in a complexity and they couldn't get along with this person and so they had to go off on their own and they said, this is who we are and this is who you have to be. And I love the body of Christ. I love that it's diverse, but it's simple. It's a circle. And the, and the Pharisees in this verse, they were trying to trick Jesus and they were trying to get him to say something so they could come against him. And he said, listen, I know what you're doing and I don't like it. <laughs> I know what you're doing. And he said, okay, you're asking me about this. What are the greatest commandments? You're trying to trick me so that you can get me to go against the law, against the Old Testament so that you can have reason to stone me, crucify me, whatever you wanted to do. We said it's very simple. 
every command, the kingdom of God, everything can be summed up in two things. Number one, love God. We talked about it today. Corey talked about the opportunity for intimacy that Jesus paved the way for. Some of you today, you stepped into that. Some of you felt that and experienced that. The reason you come to this church, some, for some of you, is because it's the only place that you experience that intimacy and that love in a corporate setting. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the greatest of commandments. Romans chapter 8, verse 39. You don't have to go there if you, if you don't want to. I'm just going to read it for you. I'll start in verse 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ, through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the summation of everything that we talked about this morning, everything that Corey talked about this morning. That there's not depression, that there's not a sin, there's nothing. My, my Bible says that there is nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. What is nothing? Okay. So you're in a relationship with God, and nothing can separate you from the love of that of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Let me ask you this question. How many of you at every moment of the day and everything that you do, when you come to church, when you're at work, when you're laying down to go to sleep, when you're doing the dishes, when you're taking out the trash, when your wife is screaming at you because you screwed up again, how many of you at all times feel the love of God? But my Bible promises me that nothing can separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus. Which brings me to my point that every relationship has two sides. And God does a really good job, and his promises are true, of maintaining his portion of our relationship. You see, it takes two to make a relationship. There are some days when I'm not the best version of myself. And my wife has a very hard time Maintaining her portion of our relationship and her love and her respect and her honor for me if I'm not maintaining my portion really well. But with God, he is continually and consistently maintaining his portion of his love and his respect and his honor for us very well. The problem is in the way that we receive who he is. Why is this commandment so important? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because in order for us to receive what he already has and he would never take away from us, there is no sin that can separate you from the love. There is no, there is no disease. There's no sickness. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, because he does a good portion of maintaining his, his portion of the relationship. But I have the opportunity to receive or not receive what he has fully given me. Correct? If Kevin gives me a gift, I have the opportunity to receive that gift or I have the opportunity to lay that gift aside. It doesn't change what the gift is. It doesn't change what he's given me. But my ability to walk in the, in the blessing of his gift is completely and 100% dependent on my ability to receive that gift. Are we okay? Okay. This is, this is all review. You, you guys know this, but it's so good to be reminded. How are we receiving the love of God? Because the love of God is perfect. How are we reflecting the love of God? Because the love of God is perfect. How are we releasing the love of God to the people around us because the love of God is perfect? So Jesus told us the most important thing that you can do on this world, in this earth, the most important thing, first and foremost, is to love the Lord 
your God. Because if you can learn to love God, then you see his immense love. You receive the gift well. You open the gift, and everything you are and everything you do and everything you say changes because you've seen his love. He doesn't give, there's a song that says uh, he won't give his heart, he, do, he doesn't give his heart in pieces. He doesn't give you just portions of himself. He gives you the perfect gift. He gave you the perfect gift of his son. He gives you all of his love. What is different is our ability to receive it. You see, the more you love God, the more you commit to him, the more you, you become intimate with him, the more you know who he is, the more you're able to receive and to understand and have revelation of the immense gift he's given you. You see, he doesn't give you glimpses. He doesn't give you pieces. He doesn't give you little portions. He gave you everything. It's our ability to see that's different. Do you understand that? He's given you this immense ability. He's given you everything. You have need, he's given it to you. Where, but the question becomes, what is your ability of faith to walk into that thing, to see that thing, to understand that thing? It all comes from my portion of the relationship in loving God well. Why is, this, why, is, why is this so important? Because it affects everything. If you can love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. If you can love the Lord God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength, then you can do number two well then you can fulfill the second commandment. You can't love people as you love yourself without loving God first because he is love. He's perfect love. You in and of yourself are not that cool. You're not that good. You're not that lovable. My wife is just inside going, amen, amen, I wish I could just scream out right now. As incredible and awesome and wonderful as you are, you are not enough to save the world. But he is. And when he said, love the Lord your God first, and once you do that well, once you're understanding how to do that well, once, once you can love God, once you've seen God for who he is and you've received his love and you're reflecting that really well, then loving your neighbor as yourself becomes so much easier. Why? Because you're not loving by your own strength. You're loving as a reflection of who he is. You're loving people as a reflection of what he's done. Why is Corey so passionate about, about seeing people say, why? Because he has experienced the love of God and it saved his life. And when you've experienced that kind of love, you don't want to hold that for yourself. You want to love people like you love yourself. You want people to experience the same thing you've experienced. I have a sermon that I'm not preaching today. It's called Stop Loving People How You Love Yourself. And that goes against Scripture, I know. But too many people try to love people without loving God first. When you love God first, you see who you are. You see who he's created you to be. You see who he is. You are filled with love. And then you can love people because you have found that love of God within yourself. The problem is some of you are loving your neighbor just like you love yourself. But you don't even, you don't even like yourself. And you're treating them how you want to be treated. But you don't believe you're worth anything, so you're not, being, you're not treating other people well. Does that make sense? This is simple, simple circle. Don't get wrapped up in the theology. Don't get wrapped up in the YouTube videos. Don't get wrapped up in the, in the political things. Don't get wrapped up. Love God. Love God. And once you love God, you see who he's created you to be. You see who you are, and you can love people as you love yourself because you're healed and you're whole, and you see who God's created you to be. And you can love the people, the people around you. 
So many relationships have issues and problems, not because of how they interact with each other, but because of how people see themselves. Let me tell you something. Young people, single people, married people, maybe you need to hear this. It is impossible for you to love another human being well unless you first understand how God loves you. You're saying, I want someone in my life right now. I want want to get married. I want to do this. I'm ready for a relationship. I want this. Awesome. I'm glad that you you think that you're ready. (laughs) So you, You might be ready. I don't know. I don't know where you're at. I'm not going to tell you where you're at. What I am going to tell you to do is if you could focus on loving God, well, then when the person that God has intended for you to come into your life and that person comes and is revealed and and you know it will be the greatest relational experience you've ever experienced on this earth. Why? Because you're healthy. Because you're good. Because you've experienced God. And you can love someone well. You love God. And then you love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and the prophets are summed up in those two simple phrases. It's so complex. It's so intricate. It's so, but it's so, so good and so simple. The question becomes, how do you love God? How do we love God? I appreciate that all of you are here. You've taken time. You've committed to a family and a body. You've committed to his bride. You're expressing your love for God. Good job. If the extent of your love for God is wrapped up in a once a week experience, you do not have a healthy relationship with the Father. How do I know that? Because our relationships on earth are are intended to be a reflection of who his relationship with his church. And if I, I know, and if you don't know this, you need to know, if you spend one, two hours a week really just loving and expressing your love and and, you know, voicing your affection. If I spent two hours a week voicing my expect- affection for my wife or just two hours a week spending time with her, just two hours a week looking at her, paying attention to her, I wouldn't have a happy wife nor a happy life. Correct? It takes time. It takes energy. It takes commitment. It takes personal responsibility. That looks different for every person. Every person receives love differently. Every person gives love differently. It takes honesty and trust. It takes faith. But I promise you, the time, the energy, Everything that you put into your relationship with God, every single thing that you put into your relationship with God, he gives back above and beyond what you've placed into him. Why? Because he has already given you all of it. He's already given you all of it. What you're doing is you are unlocking the potential of the gift every time you say yes. So you love the Lord your God, you spend time, you commit, and then you just live your life treating people the way you want to be treated. How many of you enjoy receiving gifts? Your gifts, people. Me too. 
How many of you enjoy when someone comes up to you, looks you in the face and says, hey, nice job. How many of you enjoy someone coming up to you and just giving you a nice handshake and just saying, man, way to go, or a pat on the back, or a, in a relationship, a hug? Yeah. Leo loves hugs. Everyone hug Leo today. <laughs> so what you do in your life is you never say anything that you wouldn't want said to you. You never do anything that you wouldn't want done to you. And you go above and beyond to reflect who Christ is. Love God, love people. The simplicity of the gospel wrapped up in two scriptures. But if we can learn to do this well, I promise you, it will be what revival looks like. It will be people coming to the knowledge of God because they've seen Christ in you. It will be people being healed because they've seen whole people. It will be people being restored because they've seen restoration in the lives of other people. It will be people transformed by the love of God because that's what his love in its purest form does. So I challenge you today. Number one, love God well. That is not something you come on a Sunday morning and learn. It is part, Sunday morning is part of it. It is your commitment. It is your, you being part of a family coming together, celebrating what God is already doing. I love Sunday mornings. I love family. But it is so much more than that. It's you getting alone with God. It's opening your Bible. It's turning on a, a different radio station than what you normally listen to. It's listening to sermons maybe rather than some of the music you listen to. Download a podcast. If you don't know what downloading a podcast is, ask Pablo because he's the only one evidently that knows. (laughs) He gets paid to do that, so go ahead. (laughs) Watch the sermons from, from months and years before. Get with people in some of these small groups And begin to learn and grow together. Come on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Be a part of Father's Table or the the discipleship class. The thing that I know in life is, if I don't like where I am, I need to move. I know that sounds so... The simple things in life are are sometimes just the things we need to hear. If you don't like where you are, do something different. If you don't like who you are when you're around certain people, stop being around those people. I'm not coming to the office all week. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I won't be at board meeting this week. My bad. There's board meeting this week. Bottom line, you have the ability to change everything in your life by simply loving God well. You have the ability to love people by loving God well. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray today that you would teach us, that you would guide us, that you would challenge us on a daily basis to find new ways to love you. And then, God, that we could release that love and reflect that love onto the people around us. Father, I pray that for every single person under the sound of my voice today, God, that they would be challenged. Father, that they, it doesn't have to look a certain way. It doesn't, you don't have to stand in front of people. You don't have to go preach on a street corner. But, Father, it's the simple things in life that could release your kingdom, that could change someone's life, that could save someone's life. Father, just let us be led by you. Father, bring us to a place of relationship where we, you don't even have to say anything. We can see and we know, okay, you're moving there. You're giving me the look. And I need to move. And Father, let us find joy and pleasure. Let us find uh, fullness 
in saying yes to you. I love you and I praise you. In your son's precious and holy name I pray. Amen.